We continue our coverage of the Conference USA kickoff presented by Under Armour. Now we take a look at UTEP with head coach and one of my best buddies, Sean Kugler. Coach, good to see you again. Good to see you. Also joining us today, offensive guard Will Hernandez and linebacker Alvin Jones. Guys, I promise I'll get to you in just a little bit. I want to start off with a quote you had about this season. You said they are a hungry team. They feel like they're kind of looked down upon. Nobody gives them a chance. Is that the proverbial chip on the shoulder coming into this season? Well, I would hope that they use that for motivation. You know, you pick up the paper and you look and you're picked uh, last or second to last, you know, and uh, and rightfully so. We were a 4-8 and eight team last year, and uh, we're right where we need to be right now, but at the end of the year we hope to be in a, in a bowl game. Did last year's team ever get an identity? Uh, not until the end of the year, and uh, by that point it was too late. Uh, we switched – Schemes uh, dramatically on both sides of the ball, and that, that's the fault of mine, you know, but it needed to be done for the future of the program. And uh, you see these guys go through the spring, and they're getting it, and go through the summer, and this will be their second year in the system on both sides mm -hmm. of the ball. So I'm expecting big-time improvement there, and I know the players are as well, and this is as hard of working a team as I've ever been around. You, you've never used injuries as an excuse because it is part of a game. But I look at your team, and I look at the injuries. It was amazing you were even able to compete last year. Yeah, you know, the injuries came, you know, at inopportune times and, and with guys that were very, uh, you know, focal in our success. So, uh, you know, but again, there's no excuse in football. You either win or you lose. And, uh, you know, last year we were on the losing ledger at the end of the year, and we expect to be different this year. Well, let's talk about offense because I think one of the questions a lot of us have, do you have any proven playmakers coming back this season? Well, you know, it starts at the quarterback position, and Ryan Metz, you know, when we inserted him in the lineup last year, uh, the last part of the season, he averaged over 30 points a game. So he was very productive in the offense. He's had a great spring and off season. He had an opportunity to go to the Manning camp and work with the Manning brothers, so that was a great experience for him. So he's a leader, he's a competitor, and he's going to lead the offense. Uh, but really, uh, we're built up front, and uh, we really feel that we got one of the best lines in Conference USA. Uh, we feel we have the best offensive lineman in the conference period, and in my mind, the nation and Will Hernandez. So uh, it's going to be built up front, and they're going to have to take the pressure off the young backs that we have. We have very talented backs, but all of them are unproven at this point. And uh, it's going to be on the line up front to get that done. You know, I watched Ryan Metz last year in the one game that I had. I thought he managed the game very well. But this year, will he be asked to do more? Um, Probably from a standpoint of, uh, you know, run-to-run -run checks, run-to-pass checks. He's a very intelligent kid. He's a 4.0 student. Uh, he understands those things. And, uh, you know, last year I think easing him in, we took some of those things off his plate. But he's ready for that, and he handles it well, and uh, that will help our offense progress. You lose Aaron Jones, obviously, who rushed for 1,773 yards, 17 touchdowns. You also lose an all-conference USA tight end. It's tough replacing those guys, but it's almost next man up theory, isn't it? Next man up, you know, at the tight end position, we have two guys that were transfers uh, in David Lucero, uh, who was at Boise State, and Josh Weeks, who was at BYU. Uh, a lot of talent right there. And then Sterling Napier, he's been an incumbent for us for the last few years as a blocking tight end. So uh, we're very comfortable there that that production is going to be replaced. But it's hard to replace 1,700 yards rushing, uh, especially with one guy. But we feel collectively as a group, they're talented enough. And with the big boys up front, uh, we feel we can get that done because we're always going to try to establish the run. Is, it, is there a balance between being vanilla offensively at the beginning part of the season but still being productive because you have new players coming in as some skill. Yeah, I don't think we'll be vanilla. I think we'll be actually more balanced. I think uh, this will be the best receiving group we've had since we've been there. Uh, collectively, as a tight end group, it's the most athletic group. And uh, an offensive line, uh, you know, they're built to protect and, and run the football. So uh, my biggest concern going into the season really would be the youth of the tailbacks. Right. Uh, none of those guys have really uh, played in games. Uh, Quadres Wadley is the only one that has, and, and he may miss the season with a shoulder injury. Oh. So we're looking at five guys that haven't played in games, but, again, uh, from a talent standpoint, I'm very comfortable with them. You know, we have Will sitting here, obviously, an All-American, but one coach told me this year, said you had the biggest and most physical offensive line in Conference USA, and you look at the tackles that you have, they're the kind of specimens you like at that position, correct? Yeah, we've, you know, we've, 
spent four years trying to build that, <laughs> and, and that, that was the idea going into it, build a physical team that helps you build a physical defense. Uh, not only will we be big and physical on the offensive line, this will be our most physical defensive line that we're going to put out there, you know, across the board size-wise, depth-wise. So uh, it's been a painful process to do that, but uh, these young men, uh, you know, they fit the bill, and, and they take pride in being the best offensive line in Conference USA, and, uh, and I, I would expect nothing less of them this year. Well, you started 37 games in your career so far. You're coming back, as I mentioned. You were voted All-American uh, last season. Your goals for this year after last year, and do you have a chip on the shoulder? I mean, yeah, I, I always try to play like that, you know. Uh, my goals are mainly for my team. Uh, one of the main reasons why... I came back is because I want to see, I want to win. I want to win a conference championship. I want to win with my team. I want all of us to, you know, get to enjoy that, and not, not just for myself. What makes him so special? Because he ha obviously has coached uh, Lyman on a professional level with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Had to throw that in there, Coach. <laughs> um, but what makes him special that he gets these offensive linemen to come to you, Tim? Oh, I mean, uh, it starts with me, you know. Uh, the reason why... One of the main reasons why I decided to come to UTEP was because, you know, I wanted to become a great offensive lineman. For, that was my position at the time, and I wanted to be the best that I could. And if the next level, if you have somebody that has already skipped the college level and, you know, coached at the, at the NFL level, you know, it would, it's, it's just a smart move to go and, you know, learn from him, and that's exactly what I've done these past four years, and I'm glad I did it. Well, the team last year averaged just over 185 yards rushing, but on the negative side, you gave up 22 sacks. Is that a number you obviously want to go down, but did that hurt? Yeah, you know, we get, and, and again, a lot of it was earlier in the year. Right. Um, you know, with some youth in there and, and a, a big mixture of quarterbacks in there. I think that settled down at the end of the year, especially when Ryan went in there and, and he creates the ability not only to elude sacks, but make plays with his legs. So uh, a lot of that's on the line, a lot of that's on the quarterback. But again, anything that's done in football is a, a collective unit, uh, group effort. So uh, again, I know the line's going to try to cut those sacks down this year and increase the, the rushing percentage. You know, when you, when you mentioned Ryan Metz, a lot of people, the name isn't familiar, but he is second in UTEP history in completion percentage because of last season yeah that's he, impressive yeah he's very accurate uh he's a good decision maker and uh and he can make plays with his legs so you know he's got two years left he was a young guy when he was originally thrown in there he probably wasn't ready mm -hmm. and uh but now he's ready and this is going to be his time is he being pushed by anybody that's the backup right now um you know mark torres is a, is a young man that uh we recruited from eastwood high school in el paso and uh this kid's very talented great arm great leg and uh you know, he's going to push competition-wise. Zach Greenlee, who ended, was our starter to start the year last year, had an outstanding spring. So he'll push as well. But uh, this is Ryan Metz's team. Let's talk about defense because Mr. Jones injured a little bit last year. Was health number one on your agenda coming into this season? Uh, yes, sir. Just trying to stay healthy the whole year so I can help my team win some games. You know, you look at second-team all-conference USA, you could be one of the best linebackers in Conference USA. Your brother obviously set a big standard running the football. Are you setting the standard now as far as being a linebacker? Uh, I'm trying to um, trying to just set a good example for the young, the young ones that we have. Uh, I got one more year with a lot of them, so just trying to leave off on a good note so they got something to feed off of. Six interceptions uh, only last season. Has that been a point of emphasis in the spring? Yes, sir. Uh, we got to start getting after the quarterback more, force some errant throws, because a lot of the time our, our DBs are – covering great we just get no pressure and the quarterback will take off running um so we just got to get after the quarterback you see i think a lot of this is a misnomer though because i look at the, some of the other numbers you're third in the league against the pass in 2016 you didn't have a lot of picks but you still played the pass well yeah i think our secondary played outstanding last year we got all four of those guys returning back as starters um michael lewis comes back he was a starter in 2015 that was academically ineligible last year he's back uh, so I feel real good about the secondary, but Alvin's exactly right. We didn't generate enough pressure on the quarterback. And when you go from a 4-2-5 to a 3-4, the one thing you need is linebackers. Uh, and we were short in that area, and you, you get, add an injury to our, our best linebacker, uh, kind of put us behind the eight ball. But we have 20 linebackers on our roster right now. Well, we've recruited that way, much like on offense, it's geared towards recruiting offensive linemen. On defense now, it's recruited, recruiting linebackers. And we like the quality, we like the depth, but... That's where the havoc is created, and that's where we got to generate pass rush. I want to talk about the special teams because obviously you knew, need a new kicker. But, again, breaking down the numbers, 
do you have to do better on kickoff return? Average just about 18.4 last season. Yeah, and that's always been a great unit for us. So it yeah. took a step backwards. Uh, punt return took a big step up last year. Our coverage units have always been outstanding. Right. I think we got tough kids. They run down there. Our kickoff coverage units have been outstanding. But we do have to replace a, a four-year starter at kicker in uh, Jay Maddox, and uh, uh, we'll do that. We signed a junior college kicker that we feel real high about. And uh, his name is Viles, and uh, we're looking to, excited to see him get started. But, uh, again, overall, I think adding more linebacker types, you know, your 6'2", 6'3", 230-type, instead of going out there and playing with nickel safety types that weigh right. 200, 205, you're, you're more physical on special teams. And that was another reason that we made the switch to a 3-4. Well, you get to start out your season at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma, to take on the Oklahoma Sooners who are one of the favorites, obviously, not only win the Big 12, but also possibly a national championship. How do you prepare to play in front of 86,000 people dressed in crimson and cream? Well, number one, you want to play against the best, and, and we will be yep. playing against the best. Yes, they, they, they have an opportunity to win a national championship, and, and they have quality players all across the board. So uh, guys that are competitors like Will and Alvin, they want to play against the best. So they're going to get that opportunity. And as far as preparing in front of a crowd that big, you know, we'll generate crowd noise in our practice mm -hmm. and try to sharpen up our communication going into that. But until you get out there in front of 86,000, there's, there's nothing different that can prepare you for that. Then you have to – then you host Arizona, go to New Mexico State, and host Army non-conference schedule. Playing at Oklahoma, Will, how important is it? Because you're going up against guys that have big-time reputations. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly excited. Uh, this is exactly what I want and wish I could get more of it. But uh, this game is going to be everything to me. I'm going to give it all I got, just like I do every game. Albert, how about you? Playing against the Baker Mayfield of the world. Uh, just excited to uh, get a chance to go out there and show what I got in front of the country. And um, it's not like anyone expects us to win that game. So that's why you go out there and give it your all. Now, this has nothing to do with football, but I've been wanting to ask you this for about four years. You and your brother are completely different. I don't want to use the term wacky for you, <laughs> but you, you're, you're a little more exuberant than your brother. Is that fair? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, who, who's the better brother, though, you or? Me. Okay, just check it. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think? Because they are different personalities. That's what I just couldn't get over. They competed everything, you know, when they were young, when they were, you know, on scout yeah. team and those type things, and we ever pitted those guys against it. They tried to kill each other, and it always ended up in a fight. In fact, one time I took a video of them fighting at practice, <laughs> and it ended up getting back to their mom, and I think she was a little upset yeah, at them mad. and me uh, for, for letting them fight. But uh, they're both high competitors. Uh, they both compete in the classroom as well. They're just both quality kids. All right. Sean, good to see you again, my Appreciate friend. Appreciate it. Yep. Will, thank you, you guys so stay much. healthy. Alvin, stay healthy, buddy. All right, thank you. We'll continue our coverage of Conference USA kickoff in a moment.